former Buckeye teacher has been arrested for sex crimes involving a student. Police say 42-year-old Jessica Kramer was a teacher at Odyssey Institute for Advanced and International Studies. Detectives say Kramer had a sexual relationship with a 17-year-old student that started around August 2022. School officials reportedly learned about the relationship in April of this year and reported it to police. Kramer was arrested at her Buckeye home this morning and booked into the Maricopa County Jail. Fox 10 investigates a suspect known as a pastor to many. The man in Arizona has ties to California, but now he is linked to a health care fraud, allegedly making at least thousands of dollars off of vulnerable Native Americans. Fox 10 investigator Justin Lum is live here with new details on this case you've been following from the beginning. Justin. A deal involving eight patients would have made Robert Kayongo more than $30,000 a month. But that deal was brought on by special agents and ultimately led to the pastor's arrest. We spoke exclusively to the facility who says Kayongo offered clients for cash. Here's our report, bishop or broker. Cameras are there as agents with the Arizona Attorney General's office serve an arrest warrant on a man accused of brokering patients. It's a half hour before noon on August 31st outside of Dunkin' Donuts in Chandler near Riggs Road and Arizona Avenue. 53-year-old Robert Kayongo is met by special agents with the Arizona Attorney General's office just feet away from his van. Fox 10 obtained the probable cause statement, which says Kayongo wanted to meet here to close a deal with someone who is an undercover agent. Investigators say Kayongo is a patient broker in a scheme targeting vulnerable people who need behavioral health treatment, offering food and housing at unlicensed sober living homes. And in some cases, victims, many of whom are Native American, are being trafficked from states like Alaska, Montana, New Mexico, Northern Arizona, enticed with alcohol or drugs while being kept in shady silver living homes across the valley. In this scheme, as long as a patient is enrolled in the American Indian Health Plan under Arizona's Medicaid agency, Access, their ID is used to fraudulently bill the state for therapy services rarely provided. But what would Kayongo admit to investigators about the alleged business he ran outside of church hours? Father, in the name of Jesus, anoint your word. I pray that you may bring us to speed, my father. Video from the Revival Power Ministries Facebook page shows Kayongo praying and preaching to his congregation. The church is based in the Los Angeles area, but Kayongo can also be watched virtually on his own Facebook profile, speaking to followers in this video. Sometimes you're like, oh, I'm just a drop in the ocean. I'm a nobody. Uh, you know, how can I be affecting uh, nations? Back in early August, without notice, Kayongo walked into recovery syndicate, a behavioral health outpatient facility in Chandler, using his title as a pastor. He had stated that he had a, a church in California and one here in Arizona. Meeting with management and the owners. Court documents say Kayongo claimed to help indigenous people across the valley, partnering with programs to house clients in the Chandler area. Lucinda Anderson, director of business development at the facility, says the pastor offered five patients in exchange for financials. What was the response to that? Um, my initial response was to have him repeat it because I just wanted to make sure what he said. And again, he said that we, he, we could help him out financially. And that's what I told him, it was illegal to do that. Kayongo initially told ownership his sober living home was licensed, but later admitted it was not, investigators say. Our owner, Bob Fox, had just basically had enough and told him to grab his stuff and, and leave the building, um, but not so eloquently. Anderson tells me Recovery Syndicate complies with the law as the state cracks down on fake rehab centers for Medicaid fraud, suspending payments to more than 200 providers so far in 2023 alone resulting in hundreds of displaced clients who may have never been through a legitimate treatment program. All of us are in recovery, and so it, it's a struggle. It's a struggle, and so we understand that a lot of people don't trust, um, so we work on that every single day. Less than three weeks later, the Attorney General's undercover agent called Kayongo, telling him about a behavioral health outpatient facility set to open in need of patients. 
Investigators say Kyungle proposed 8 to 10 clients, and both parties decided on $750 per patient per week. The next day, court docs reveal Kyungle texted the agent, claiming the price didn't make economic sense for him and needed $1,050 per patient per week, which they agreed to. I've heard so many different prices. This, by far, is probably the largest. Reva Stewart is an advocate for Native Americans being targeted for access fraud. Her organization, Stolen People, Stolen Benefits, does outreach to help displaced people who have been kicked out of fake rehab centers coming off the state's crackdown. So you hear from the relatives on social media that say, well, I'm in this home and I can't leave. Even if you do drive by these homes, there's no movement, but yet you see that they're going into these homes. According to the AGO, Kayango's sober living home is named Shared Love, which is not found in the Department of Health database. The LLC is registered to a property in Avondale, but that's not where authorities found eight patients after arresting the bishop. A search warrant served at a Chandler home near Riggs and Cooper Roads led agents to a makeshift room in the garage equipped with a bed, TV, microwave, and a small window AC unit that didn't work. Investigators say the home was unsanitary and smelled like sewage. They are being treated like animals. It makes me angry to the fact that you can treat our relatives this bad, cattle them into a home, and allow them to live like this while you're out there brokering them. The property under investigation is owned by Eucalyptus Chandler LLC, which is registered to an address of a property owned by Chestnut Gilbert LLC, according to the state's Corporation Commission. Kayango faces charges of conspiracy and attempting to commit patient referral fraud, posting a $50,000 bond. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. His phone went to voicemail when we called for comment. According to AGO investigators, the pastor admitted to doing business with three other behavioral health clinics operating a transitional home since last October. Authorities say Kayango received 150 bucks per patient per day from facilities claiming patients on the American Indian Health Plan had more value. It makes me upset because it's hurting our people. Kayango has another court hearing scheduled for September 26th. We also reached out to Revival Power Ministries for comment. No response yet. Mr. Kayango was served an indictment today, and this is critical why. Oh, we just we just got that indictment. You're right, John. Today, served to Robert Kayango, and this is big because through this crackdown, we've seen multiple charges of fraud, but this actually seen for the first time attempt to commit consideration for referral of a patient, client, or customer. And this is a big deal because investigators say there are hundreds of sober living homes across the valley that are unlicensed and doing this. How many more quote? brokers are there out there uh, like the alleged uh, allegations that Robert Kayongo faces Brokers right who are delivering patients to these homes that bilk the taxpayers. Offering them for a specific mm -hmm. price. Uh, so this is going to be a long process to actually flush all of this out throughout the state of Arizona. Yeah, and you broke this story, a huge investigation, but it keeps trickling. You get more information and, and you were saying that the see something, say something got him behind bars. And it comes down to the people that are actually seeing suspicious uh, activity. This recovery syndicate facility saw something here and they reported it to access on the complaint form. Simple as that. And that's what got the attorney general's office involved with this undercover investigation. And now these are some serious charges that Kayango is facing. So we're going to stay on top of this okay. case. Okay. Yeah. Great work, Justin. Thanks. Thank you. Two women behind bars accused in a despicable crime. Scottsdale police say they were targeting female senior citizens at supermarkets and ripping them off. 26-year-old Zane Williams and 27-year-old Tanisha Odom booked on identity theft charges. Police say they would distract elderly women and steal their phones and wallets out of their purses. They are linked to at least four incidents at different grocery stores. When officers pulled over one of the suspects, they found ID cards and credit cards in the car. If you know any other victims, you are urged to call Scottsdale. Valley Parent is accused of behaving badly. 
Well, she's accused of resisting arrest during a fight at the Sunny Slope High School campus. Police responded to the fight on campus, asked for backup as it escalated. Officers arresting 35-year-old Brittany Richards on charges of resisting arrest and interfering with an educational institution. A student was also arrested. Nobody was seriously hurt during the fight. But we begin tonight at 9 with the man considered armed and dangerous now in custody tonight. The fugitive was captured in Coolidge late last night. And here's what's amazing. It was all caught on camera. This came after a 24 hour search that closed schools there and rattled nerves in the small town about 50 miles southeast of Phoenix. Lauren Clark joins us live with the latest tonight. Lauren. Hey, good evening there, Brian and Linda. According to officials, Donald Hill was taken into custody late Friday night. They say that they received information that he was in the area and found him inside of an apartment complex, much to the relief of people who live here in this community. Keep your hands on top of your head. It's all captured on cell phone video. The moment an hours long manhunt in Coolidge came to a close. He put his hands behind his head and slowly started backing up towards the cop car and they have him in custody. Neighbor Tony was inside his apartment when he heard a blaring message. We have you surrounded. Come out with your hands up for the safety of you and everyone around. And for a good five, maybe 10 minutes, just that on repeat. And he got more close with the threat saying we are going to break your window, break your door, and it's in the K-9 unit if you don't comply. 45-year-old Donald Hill was safely arrested in a multi-agency effort, including the U.S. Marshal Service Task Force, the Pinal County Sheriff's Office, and Coolidge Police. They say Hill was wanted on very serious felony charges, five counts of kidnapping and five counts of aggravated assault. Officers told Fox 10 he has connections to the area. On Thursday... Law enforcement says Hill was spotted in a neighborhood. Nearby schools went into lockdown. Well, I, I came home and there was choppers flying all over the place. And I said, what the heck's going on? Despite law enforcement presence, Hill evaded apprehension. It's unclear how or why he got away. But Coolidge locals like Paul Daniels were on edge. Yeah, it was kind of, you know, made you feel uneasy. My wife was pretty much nervous most of the time, you know. He says he's glad he's finally behind bars. He had a lot on him. He was, they had to get him. I'm glad they caught him. Details surrounding Hill's crimes remain unclear, as do why there was such an uh, influx of resources dedicated to his capture. However, the U.S. Marshals Task Force that assisted in this is dedicated to the most violent offenders. Reporting live here in Coolidge, Lauren Clark, Fox 10 News.